This table gives us a few values of the function g. So we know what g of x is equal to at these values right over here. x is equal to negative two, negative one, zero, and one. It says Raphael said that since g of one minus g of zero over one minus zero is equal to negative five, there must be a number c in the interval, in the closed interval from zero to one, for which g prime of c is equal to negative five. Which condition makes Raphael's claim true? And they give us four choices here. So I encourage you to pause this video and try to work through it on your own. All right, before we even look at these choices, let's just revisit what's going on over here. So Raphael is saying since this, so he's looking at g of one minus g of zero. So this is g of one minus g of zero, that's this right over here, over one minus zero, over one minus zero. So what is this? This is, this right over here is the average, average rate of change, rate of change between, between x equals zero and x is equal to one. Another way to think about it, this is the slope of the line that connects the point zero comma eight to the point one comma three, and that average rate of change is negative five. And that he's saying there must be a number c in the interval, in the closed interval, from zero to one, for which the derivative of that x value, when x is equal to c, is the same thing as this average rate of change. So this is what the mean value theorem is all about. It's this notion that, like we plot it a little bit, just as a bit of a review. So we're going from zero comma eight, which is maybe right over here, to one comma three. So if that's one, one comma three might look something like this. So we're seeing the average rate of change. The slope of the line that connects those two points is like this. What the mean value theorem tells us, if we have the conditions for the mean value theorem, that let's say that our function does something like this, as long as our functions meet the conditions of the mean value theorem, which essentially has to be differentiable over the open interval and continuous over the closed interval, then there has to be a point C where the slope of the tangent line at point C is equal to the average rate of change. So over here, the slope of the tangent line looks the same as our average rate of change right over there, just like that. So this is the mean value theorem. But we, in order to make this claim, that there, in order to apply the mean value theorem, to say there must be a c in the interval where the slope of the tangent line at x equals c is the same as the average rate of change, we have to feel very confident that we are meeting the conditions for the mean value theorem. Namely, that the function is continuous over the closed interval and differentiable over the open interval from zero to one. So let's look at the choices now. G is continuous at x equals zero and x equals one. Well that by itself isn't sufficient. We also have to be continuous at all the points in between. So that by alone does not make his claim true. G is continuous over the closed interval from zero to one. So that's nice, but that doesn't ensure that we're differentiable over the open interval from zero to one. We have to be continuous and different, we have to be continuous over the closed interval and differentiable over the, over the open interval. So we can rule that one out, that's not enough. G is differentiable over the open interval from negative one to one. And so that includes, this right over here includes, includes the open interval that we care about. This includes the open interval from zero to one. That's what we care about. So that is a check that we're differentiable over the open interval and continuous over the closed interval from negative one to one. Well, once again, this includes the closed interval that we care about. This includes the closed interval from zero to one. And so this is looking good. What we care about is that we're differentiable over this interval, and if we're differentiable here, we're definitely differentiable here, and that we're continuous over this interval. So I like this choice. This right over here says g is differentiable over the open interval, and at x is equal to zero. So this is getting us close, because if you are differentiable, you are continuous. So one way to interpret this is that we are differentiable over the interval that is from zero to one that includes the point zero. 
Now this is close. If they said that we are differentiable for over the closed interval from zero to one, that actually would have been sufficient because if you are differentiable, then you are also continuous. But they did not say that, so we can rule this one out as well. We would have to know this last choice still does not make us confident that we are continuous at the point one. That's what being continuous over the closed interval would have told us. Let's do one more example that's a little bit different than this one. So here we are told. That g is a differentiable function. Once again, they've given us the function sampled at some values of x. Max was asked whether there's a solution to g prime of x is equal to two over on the interval or on the closed interval from three to six. And so we see three here. We see three here. So we want to care about the closed interval from three to six. So the first thing he did, he says, okay, let's find the average rate of change from x equals three to x equals six. So this is our change in our function. So g of six minus g of three over six minus three. Now see, g of six is equal to one. G of three is equal to negative five. This is three. One minus negative five over three. That's six over three. It is indeed equal to two. So that step makes sense, and the reason why I'm going through it, they say, is Max's work correct? If not, what is his mistake? So let's look at step two, the mean value theorem. So Max is now saying, okay, I found the average rate of change between x equals three and x equals six, and then he says the mean value theorem guarantees a solution where g prime of x equals two on this interval. So we have to be careful here. Because he just immediately applies the mean value theorem without establishing the conditions for the mean value theorem. So I would say, even though it does say that we're differentiable over it, I would make it. I think his mistake is that he did not make this clear. He should have said his step two should have been something like, because g is differentiable. Differentiable. Over, or it sounds like it's a differentiable function. So we could say for all x, it's differentiable for all x. We can say the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem applies over this interval. If you wanted to be really careful, you could have said because g is differentiable for all x, it is definitely differentiable over this closed interval. And if it's differentiable over the closed interval, it's also continuous over the closed interval. And so the mean value theorem definitely applies. And then say the mean value theorem guarantees a solution. So the reason why it's important to stress is if you're taking a test, especially things like the AP exam, they definitely, if you're going to apply one of these, really any theorems, they're going to want you to. Put down all the conditions for the theorem to ensure that you can apply it as part of your argument.